Tuttle here. It's storm season in Oklahoma, and with that comes torrential rain, high winds, and hail. To protect your home and your family from these threats, the one roofing company you should trust is Ferguson Roof Systems. They've been providing the best in roofing services for nearly half a century. Ferguson is Oklahoma's full service roofing company, certified with an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating and a five-star rating on Google. And with Ferguson now offering class four impact resistant shingles, now is the time to trust them with your home's roof. Get started today at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle back with you again. It is Fridays for your lunchtime live weather update is what we're gonna be doing here for today. So thanks for joining me. Uh, make sure you like and share this video. Tell your friends and family about AT's weather and we'll get down to business. I hope you guys are ready for a weekend that is gonna be much cooler than what we've seen the last few days. That's the big highlight for today. Yes, there'll be some storms, some severe weather, but the weekend, oh my goodness. <laughs> when I need a break, man. This. This heat's been a little oppressive here for the middle of May. I mean, who wants that nonsense? Uh, out there currently, we've got um, some clouds in the background. Um, so, you know, that's kind of an indication some things have changed already in the atmosphere. Temperature, we're at 74 degrees here in my backyard. Uh, the wet, With a wind out of the west-northwest, that typically means you've had a fro-paw. Fro-paw means frontal propagation. So we've had a front move through the area. In this particular case, a cold front. If you look at the uh, radar view here across central Oklahoma, no rain with this and clouds out there, like we said, but if you do notice this little thin blue line, this is the radar beam bending along the inversion of that cold front layer. So that's moving through central Oklahoma. So this is kind of a key point element for this afternoon. So if you are to the west of this cold front zone, guess what? No severe weather for you during the daylight hours or early this evening. Uh, if you are along this frontal boundary and points to the south and east of it, yes, you do have a little threat of severe weather. So that is moving slowly to the south and east. It'll start to stall out eventually here south of the metro, probably right around maybe Paul's Valley uh, to Duncan and back up maybe toward Creek County, something like that west to Tulsa. So that would be the range we'll focus on for today as far as severe weather is concerned. I'm going to load up something here real quick. Let's see. Where am I? Dun, 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 dun. That's not what I wanted. What was it that I wanted? I don't remember what I I'll get back to that later. I gotta figure out what it's called. All right, so let's just move on to the next thing I wanna show you. So we can look at the mesonet map here, which indicates where the cold front is. You see all those little barbs um, to the north and west of Oklahoma. You see temperatures cooling down the red in the 60s. We can look at that at a better position. And that's this map right here, which does show color-coded range with that. So temperatures in the 60s out in the panhandle. Boy, that is nice for the lunchtime temperature, right? And then to the 80s though, elsewhere over central and eastern Oklahoma, Talk about those winds coming in out of the northwest um, behind the front, gusting up to around 20 miles per hour. And south and east of the front, uh, you still have those winds out of the south, still also gusting up around 30. So a little breezy today, not as breezy as it was, uh, what, last night in the evening? My goodness. Uh, but some rainfall fell over the last, um, not, not last night, but the day before. So this is a nice total to see here in northwest Oklahoma, where they did see up anywhere from a half inch to in spots around two inches of rainfall. So much needed rainfall in an area that is hit hard by the drought, as you can see here on the map. So we always need rain out here in the western half of the state. Unfortunately, long-term trends for the drought did not look good for the summer. In other words, it looks like that will pretty much stay entrenched. Now, if we do look at the roll cloud, you're going, what's a roll cloud? Well, that's this little thin yellow line you see on the screen. That is along the leading edge of the cold front. This indicates extreme instability. In other words, plenty of cape and moisture out ahead of the front that that is um, residing along the boundary. So that will be um, a good indicator that we should see some good thunderstorms going up here this afternoon as this front makes its way southward and we start to to eliminate a little bit of the cap strength. There is a severe weather threat here across the yellow region here in southern Oklahoma and it does um, there's a marginal risk here in the metro, but that's mainly for overnight stuff because we will see another secondary round of storms overnight that'll be elevated. Sometimes you get some small hail, some gusty winds with those, but as far as anything significant, that's going to be down uh, south and east of that cold front we talked about here to southern and eastern Oklahoma. And really, you could probably extend this up toward the Tulsa area, 
Uh, if you look at the Storm Prediction Center, they do have that little uh, yellow ring that goes just south of Tulsa, but it does include parts of eastern Oklahoma. They do put in a little bit of a tidal threat, this little bitty light green circle you see here. It's basically a very chicken cover our butts just in case because when you do have a front that moves slowly, and if you can get a storm to anchor along that boundary, that's how you can get a, a, a tornado this time of the year. So we'll be watching for that this afternoon and evening. It doesn't make it like a big deal, but it's going to be out there. So here's a look at how the models estimate the storms to develop here this afternoon. So they do blow it up here along the cold front. Late afternoon, probably any time after 4 o'clock, really is fair game. Uh, they'll develop here across south central and northeastern Oklahoma. You'll see that elevated stuff develop here behind the front uh, in the midnight hour or so here in central northern Oklahoma. So yes, there'll be more rain uh, other than just what's along the front later today. There's 6 o'clock in the morning, a little wet there for Tulsa, but things are quiet here in Oklahoma City. As that activity moves away um, by 9 o'clock out of the state for our Saturday. So our Saturday looks pretty good. Now as we head into Sunday morning and Saturday night, Sunday morning, there will be a resurgence of some new storms down there in southeast Oklahoma. Uh, otherwise, most of the state looks good and looks dry for our upcoming weekend. I always have to get through the uh, period of some severe weather. Now, when we talk about the rainfall within this, you're going to pick up easily a half inch of rain in some of these heavier thunderstorm downpours overnight tonight. But in these afternoon events, some of these models, especially there's some training where they kind of roll along the front, you're looking up around three to maybe four inches of rain. Yeah, that would be causing some flash flooding. So keep that in mind if you're underneath these heavier downpours here south of Oklahoma City, say around Paul's Valley, Paoli area, up toward maybe around Shawnee, point southward from there, and out eastward toward McAllister along I-40. Those can, seems to be the favorite spot from the model data. And when you look at the potential for damaging winds, these little brown areas indicate winds up around 87 miles per hour. So again, we're kind of in that hybrid summer spring mode for these storms. And when you get into that mode, you can get these damaging winds that do kick up like that. We had a lot of 70 mile per hour winds um, the other night from those storms in northwest Oklahoma. Now we do look at other models just to kind of give you an idea of how they develop storms this afternoon. We'll just switch one. So there's one, two, this is about the time they should initiate, so you know, late, late afternoon, early evening. There's a third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eighth one. So they, they all say something a little different, but the take home would be the majority of the action here in the southern Oklahoma at the onset of the event. Um, this little high resolution model likes that idea, blows it up here in southern Oklahoma and it kind of continues it uh, overnight in the southeast Oklahoma and it kind of expands on the Red River um, and then it's moving into uh, northeastern Texas. It does have that new secondary batch starting to form at midnight here in southwest Oklahoma City. So that seems to be the general take home from all the models. Um, there was one that was a little excited. Uh, this one right here was really excited on the frontal boundary. Uh, which had some helicity tracks with it, so a little bit of hail, potential tornado within those, and that's um, it's going to be misplaced a little bit because it's a little bit uh, west of the front, but it has the right idea. So that's just something to watch for, and that could really be anywhere uh, where that front resides here in central to northeast Oklahoma. Now, as far as your temperatures are concerned today, we'll get you up into the upper uh, 60s on Sunday and mid 60s on Saturday. So the weather this weekend, almost frigid. <laughs> Almost record cold highs kind of a deal. Uh, then after that, we're looking really good temperature-wise for a while. Monday, I think there's going to be some more rain around, uh, helping to keep things a little bit cooler. And you will notice the, the temperatures will eventually rebound here up into the mid to upper 70s, over at lows into the uh, mid 50s and 60s. So there's a look at how things ought to progress. Um, i tell you what, let me show you. Um, yeah, let's do this. All right, we'll show you just some of the estimated temperatures for Oklahoma for the round for the elsewhere across the state this weekend, and not just Oklahoma City. Okay, so for today, um, well, these are going to bust because the front's already through. These will be the highs of the day, which has already occurred, um, so that's not going to happen. So we'll strike that data. We'll just start with tomorrow. So here's Saturday. So you can see temperatures there into the 60s here across central, northern, and western Oklahoma, into the 70s to 80s in southeast Oklahoma still. If you are traveling, doing a little bit of fishing or hunting or camping or whatever in southeast Oklahoma, you're going to be a little bit warmer than the rest of the state. And then on Sunday, more of that cooler weather will filter down. So we're looking more 70s down across the southern half of the Oklahoma and the 60s across the northern half. No, oh, even not bad in northern Texas and the Texas Panhandle. So the weekend looks really good as far as that's concerned. 
All right, so I did look beyond Sunday, but I did see an upper, upper level disturbance. Let me see uh, if this will cover that time frame. Let's see here, does it show it? So this is, yeah. So this is Monday morning, and so even though we have a mostly dry weekend, but we will start off late Sunday night into Monday morning with some rain as a little disturbance moves through. So your Monday morning drive will be a little bit wet and really off and on throughout the day. So there's scattered showers off and on as a little upper level low moves overhead. So that was one last thing I want to throw at you since I just kind of focused on the weekend. Well, that was it for me. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll keep an eye on things later on today. So if it does look like we might get one of those little freak occurrences of a tornado along the cold front, I will let you know. Uh, if you want to play armchair meteorologist, we'll just pull up the Oklahoma Mesonet and you can find out wherever that frontal boundary stops this afternoon. That'll be the focus where there could be some potential traffic activity. Um, let's see. For those of you folks that want to hang in here just for a second, let me show you a couple things here on the science side. So this is a look at the jet stream for today. Um, this is the afternoon. So we kind of in a what we call a southwest flow loft, which means most of the energy in the red is up to our north. We just have these little weak disturbances that move through across Oklahoma today. So it's not a big, uh, uh, what we call a synoptic forcing event, we call it a, more of a subtle uh, mesoscale type forcing. Uh, same thing even with the mid-level instability at 700 millibars. There's not a whole lot uh, with that front. I'm kind of surprised with the fact there's a roll cloud along it, which usually indicates that there is. So this model's already out to lunch with that. And that's okay. If we do look at the dew point map for this afternoon based off a few different models. You can see where the wind barbs here are out of the south and up to the north. They're out of the north. And so in, right where they meet is where the front is, pretty much also where this purple line is. Wherever you see this purple line is basically where the front position is. By four o'clock this afternoon, you can see that's just west of Tulsa, right around Paoli Paul's Valley, back down to around Duncan. So there's one model version there. Here's another one which is a little bit more south and uh, or east from that. But then if we look at this one, it's kind of a little bit more to the west. And this one is also a little bit more to the west. So that's the general idea is basically from, from Tulsa down um, to Paul's Valley, if you were to draw a line. And we do look at any instability along and ahead of that in the atmosphere, and there's plenty. I could pick all the models, and they all say Kate values up around 5,000 joules per kilogram. There's one, there's another one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's one, there's one. So all the high, level, all high resolution models go, whoa, plenty of moisture out there, plenty of instability, plenty of heat to get some rough, tough thunderstorms going. And if you look at the fact where the cap would break, it would be out ahead of the cold front, which is in this little white area here. You see all these little counties underneath. Where you see all this color, this represents a very strong cap, and that is back behind the cold front. So that, um, that's where the stable layer is in the atmosphere. So if we look at all the different models, you can see how that little stable layer kind of outlines where the cold front is. Kind of cool, huh? So that's, you can always tell where the position of the front is by looking at the cap strength in a situation like this. So in other words, the cap should break because those um, values are much lighter. If you look at the tornado ingredients, they're a little higher up around the Tulsa area. So northeastern, eastern Oklahoma, uh, this particular model um, doesn't have much in south uh, central Oklahoma or southern Oklahoma. Kind of keeps the most, most ingredients out in that area. Um, but it's not overly impressive it's just kind of there um, like i said it's, it's going to take a little anchoring on the boundary of the front to produce a tornado in this situation more than likely but it's not off the table okay so here's a look at a close-up view of that significant tornado parameter and you can see how it kind of the colors let's see we'll stop it at about six seven seven eight o'clock so right runs runs right around tulsa like i said back down through about the paoli paul's valley area and it's a little bit south of that so that's where your better ingredients are. So this particular model did favor Southern Oklahoma a little bit more than some of those others, um, but it's not overly strong. But again, that's just kind of what we'll be watching for today. And then here's the look at the hail size potential. This this model likes to put around mm, golf ball size hail in some of these stronger storms, um, but that might not be the case. We take a look at a forecast sounding, for example. So let's do that. Mm, let's Let's use this one. We'll use the NAM three kilometer, and I'll just point out a spot out here around Ada, looks like. Just kind of get an idea. Um, I'm gonna pick another one, because it didn't give me the indices I wanted. Let's pick over here south of Tulsa. All right, well, as a potential for tornadoes, looking for some hail estimates in the forecast sounding data, and it's not showing me anything there. So in other words, it's not finding similar situations historically in the analog data as to produce a hail size. So that does happen, I guess, on occasion. 
Usually though, they'll spit out what an estimated hail size would be. Um, so without looking at the morning sounding data, it's a good way to forecast it, and none of them are. Huh. Surprising. All right, let me see what the morning forecast sound or morning sounding data was. See if that tells me anything. Uh, big cap. That's what it tells me. Good grief, man. Phew. So that's why when that front came through here about an hour ago, it produced no um, storms, no severe weather, no nothing. Well, also the morning sounding doesn't have a ship um, reference to it. Ship is for the uh, significant hail, uh, and so it didn't calculate the data because the cap is way too strong. So didn't have a uh, manner of that. That's all right. So we can we can look at the model estimate on the other panel. I'll show you just about uh, golf ball size hail. Probably a little bit larger because you get cape values up around uh, four or five thousand, um, and you get yeah. Let me go back to this, and you get these lapse rates in here of between eight to nine degrees. That typically indicates some really big hail. So we're talking baseball, softball, something like that. So the data says um, even though the output didn't put out any estimates from the algorithms. The data this morning for the atmosphere that we're in suggests some pretty stout hail sizes. So that's what we got with this for today. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. Be safe out there. Make sure you download my weather app, AT's Weather to Go. It's free. It tracks all these storms. Um, you can get on Apple and Google Play. And if there is going to be a tornado, it'll let you know many, many minutes ahead of time before an actual warning comes out. It gives you more time to prepare. Um, it's an app unique of its kind doing that, so make sure you utilize that feature. Um, that's going to be about it for me. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a great weekend as well. We'll talk soon. Take care.